Juneteenth, and it's the celebration or the commemoration of Juneteenth. And earlier today, we hosted an event here in Washington, D.C. I live streamed a little bit of it, but the program itself was not, I was not able to live stream it because I, I was one of the speakers, so I wasn't able to um, be the camera guy while I was actually talking. So for the most part, I didn't have an opportunity to do much of the filming. I did have somebody with me that helped me do a little bit of the filming. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, share with you uh, uh, the event today. The event took place today, like I said, in Washington, D.C., uh, in the northwest part of the city. Um, it started out at a high school and people walked um, about a half a mile uh, to a final destination where um, it was a beautiful um, scenery, the uh, weather was just perfect, and we had a decent crowd that showed up. So I want I wanted to share with you um, that, uh, that footage that we took earlier today. So let me um, put the, um, the video up for you so you can see it. Wonderful, beautiful things. So I'm going to ask our Grand Chaplain um, or the Marshal to come and give us an opening blessing. Where the heads bow. Most holy Lord God, the Grand Architect of the Universe, to give every good and perfect gift. We come this afternoon, oh Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this peace, Mark, and demonstration of Heavenly Father. All who are involved. We come here, oh Heavenly Father, because so many things have been going on since the pandemic. We ask a special blessing on those black lives that matter, those men and women that were lost, have been lost through police brutality, through shooting, oh Heavenly Father. For all those innocent ones who have been found, who were found guilty, now found innocent, oh Heavenly Father. We ask a blessing. There's so much that we have to be thankful for. And let's all hear that are summer, oh Heavenly Father. We bless the organizations that are here today. We ask a special blessing on our virtual grand master and most words of grand major and the Heavenly Father. And all here is simple. But Lord, more than that, let us remember what old King David said when he had a talk with you. He said, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, and whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I send up into heaven, thou art there, and make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. But if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand leave me in the right hand to hold me. You are the Alpha and Omega, Heavenly Father. You are the beginning and you are the end. And we come this day, O Lord, just thank you for that. Thank you for life, O Heavenly Father. And let the world know how precious life is. And as I always say, you know what's in our hearts, you would know what's in our minds. This prayer and blessing, O Lord, we ask in our name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have uh, our welcome by uh, Grandworthy Matron, Grandworthy Patron, Eunice J. Dingle, Joseph Dingle. Thank you, worthy matron. Beth, to everyone here, a civil greetings. For we say all the time that this is truly the day the Lord hath made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. I wish to welcome you to our historical location. This Prince Hall Masonic building erected the 
cornerstone reads 1892. Our history dates back long before then, as we know it of slavery, the era of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, historical incidents of Emmett Till, Rodney King, down through the years, we've witnessed time and time again. But because God allowed a pandemic to have us seated at home to witness what for ourselves, the camera. it was almost as if they didn't believe our stories. And so now having seen it with their own visible eyes, we are here today to speak out for countless events that have happened for George Floyd and recently Richard Brooks and all of those who have suffered in our own lives. I can tell you stories myself from my childhood to now. And so it is we welcome you all that who have taken the time to come out because this matters. This means something to you. We welcome you here on behalf of the Georgiana Thomas Grand Chapter, Order of the Eastern Star, an organization that stands for charity, truth, and loving kindness. Countless years we have given of our time and service through scholarships, charity, community service and just love for our fellow brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming, we welcome you. Now I would like your attention to bring forth for his remarks, the most worshipful Grand Master, the Prince Hall Lodge, jurisdiction of the District of Columbia, Columbia the Honorable Quincy G. In a letter I wrote to the jurisdiction of our principal Masonic family, I mentioned that for most of us around, our first real visual experience with police brutality happened in 1991 when the recorded meeting of Rocky King took place. Riots, protests, gatherings, speeches, and marches followed that event as well. 30 years later, and at various intervals in between, history has repeated itself. Those five forms of demonstration continue to be invoked with what appears to be no avail. Eight, one question, and one question remains. What will it take? As Prince Hall Masons and members of the Order of the East, our support has been stored financially and physically supporting who continue to labor and fight to get the answer to what will it take? Today I have called upon the jurisdiction to march in solidarity, brothers and sisters to show that we are not silent, quiet, or lacking in action. I want to thank the Grand Worthy Major for putting the call out as well and for bringing those welcoming words. Juneteenth is often referred to as the longest running African-American holiday, but it sure is hard to celebrate when we still appear to be fighting for the right to be equal, treated fairly, and free to believe that when we get pulled over or walk down the street, enter a store, that the approach and mindset is the same for us as it is for others. So I continue to say, what will it take? Thank you, members of the jurisdiction, for coming out and supporting this event. Thank you. Thank you, Grand Master. We will now have coming forward a brief history of Juneteenth and this um, Civil War, African American Civil War Memorial former council member from Ward 1 and the director of the African American Civil War Museum and Memorial, the Honorable Frank Smith. 
Thank you very much. Let me welcome you to the African American Civil War Museum and just say that we stand in front of these walls here that have the names of 209,145 African Americans who joined President Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War to fight for their freedom. If they don't join this army, slavery doesn't end. And if slavery doesn't end, we don't have no civil rights because we had we, we were we were a people without a country. We were defined by the Constitution as slavery and property, and uh, we had no rights until this uh, amendment was passed. And so, on the what happened on Juneteenth, uh, June 19th, uh, somewhere between the fifth. The reason why they call it Juneteenth is because it happened between the 15th and the 19th. Okay, no, nobody really knows the exact date. But we settled on June 19th uh, when Granger and the Union Army go into Galveston, Texas to read the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, I made some copies of it that I was going to hand out, and then somebody reminded me that we've been told not to hand out any paper during this time because paper carries that pandemic drug, uh, that pandemic germ that is, that, is, uh, that is torturing our community. And being a 78-year-old survivor of cancer and a few other things, uh, I certainly don't want it myself, and I don't want anybody else to have it that's around us. But I wanted to just share this story with you today because we, uh, some controversy, I just, I just finished a uh, press uh, uh, report about, about renaming some of these monuments. And I gave them the names of about eight or ten soldiers who are named on this wall right here who ought to have some bases and some monuments and things named for them. Their names are on our walls out here, but they ought to be on there to take down some of these things like Robbie Lee on them and put some of these soldiers up there who were loyal to the United States, who gave their blood and gave their sweat to make this country a better place. I think it is criminal, to be honest with you, that an African American has to go to Fort Jackson to take his basic training on a base that name for a Confederate soldier who committed treason and tried to destroy the country. So it's about time for that to be changed. And I think uh, by now uh, we've got enough young people out here who are mad enough and, 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 and smart enough and, and cool enough. You all are going to change this thing. And so I want to take my hats off uh, before I leave here and give a tip to the young people in Black Lives Matter who have really turned this world upside down. They've turned this world upside down. And leave it for better. So congratulations to you. I uh, all do keep up the good work. Don't stop until victory is won. Don't stop until victory is won. Either bless you and may God continue to bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Smith. I have come forward for a peaceful nation, Baba Radi Harambe. I'm sorry, Marcus Hughes. I'm sorry. I got that on. Moment of silence. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That sounds great. I'm here to lead you all in a moment of silence. This is a time of reflection for all of those that have been slain by injustice, reflective on how they're no longer here and what we must do to ensure it doesn't happen again. So at this time, I ask that you bow your head in a moment of silence. to do today. So as we are taking in this program, 
understand that you are an active participant. You're not sitting on the sideline as a spectator. You have a responsibility as well. Take on your responsibility and continue to fight for the future. Columbia to Congress, the Honorable Franklin Garcia. Thank you, Kamashita. How you doing? Yeah. When I say DC, you all say statehood. DC. Statehood. DC. Statehood. You know, you all have the potential to be the messenger of peace and justice. Dr. Frank Smith, I earlier today took on the waves and educated our Afro descendants all over the world of what Juneteenth is. And I tell you, they, they couldn't believe. And so we all have the potential to be messengers of justice and peace. So get out there and do just that. Now, I am so grateful to see so many of you here today. Because I know in many ways you're even risking your lives, right? But peace and freedom are worth it. You all agree with that? We certainly do. And we, this time, you know, we have celebration for Juneteenth every year here in the city. But this time feels different. It is change is finally coming. And in the district of Columbia, change translates to something we call statehood. Next Friday, Finally, the House of Representatives were having vote on the House floor for this statehood. Now we're so happy about that because we hope with 225 co-sponsors it were passed. And finally, this is statehood and only one chamber of the U.S. Congress, it were passed. Now I want to talk to you about another bill that's pending in the U.S. Congress. That's H.R. 40. That's the commission to study and develop preparations for African Americans. Hey, I'm known as the Breath Seku, and I'm also known as Mama Ayo, the storyteller. And today is about Jubilee Day. Everybody say Jubilee Day. Jubilee Day. Freedom Day. Freedom Day. Emancipation Day. Emancipation Day. Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Juneteenth Day. Juneteenth Day is the day, June 19th. And how many people know the story about Juneteenth? Raise your hand. Okay, it's not everybody. All right, so I hope I'm gonna be able to do this in a dramatic way so that it can help you remember it, especially for the children who uh, may not know about it. And hopefully you'll be able to uh, share this information with other people. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Oh, it sure is hot out here in this field this day. Wow, another day, 
I'm here on the Pierce Mill Plantation in Washington, D.C. Oh, I be picking and shafting the wheat for the mill. Working, because I'm the property of Mr. and Mrs. Pierce. And they call me Sissy Sue. Yeah, I've been on this here plantation ever since I could remember. That's <laughs> as far back as I could remember. Oh, I was the property. I worked the fields. My mammy, she gave me one pleasure in life. She, she gave me this here cloth. This here cloth, she said, came from Africa. And, and I ain't know where Africa was, but I knew when I put it on, I knew that it was from my mammy. And it had been passed down from her mammy to, from her mammy, from, from her mammy, and maybe even from her mammy. <laughs> and <laughs> I didn't know my mammy, so just the idea that this was something she left me when I was a baby. They had breeded her out, and when I was born, <laughs> they snatched me from her, and I didn't even know her. All I had was what was left for me. <laughs> yeah, I worked hard, and when the other people on the plantation would see me with my kerchief on, they would say, oh, you think you something else, and I say, yeah, yeah. I got to have some pleasures in my life. And so I wear this proudly. Yeah, we was working all the time. That's all we did was work. But we heard that there was going to be a great war and that the president was about to free us people in bondage, the enslaved people of Washington, D.C. And we was listening, waiting to hear the news, and we heard old Master Pierce. He was sitting, rocking on the house in the chair, and he was saying, ain't nobody going to take my property. <laughs> no, they not. I pay for you people. Use my property. And I bet not have nobody coming here trying to tell me what to do with my property to be over my dead body. Well, sure enough, it actually was over Mr. Pierce's dead body because truly the war came. And when it came, we all ran down to the church and we heard the people talking and talking about soldiers coming and people freeing us, people of Washington, D.C. And when we ran down to the 15th Street Baptist Church, we went and we was all praying and we was praying and we were saying, oh, free us. Free us, oh, free us, oh, we couldn't wait. And they kept saying that on April the 16th, the president was going to sign this big bill called the D.C. Emancipation Act. And we waited. And we prayed, oh, please, free us, free us. And finally we heard the bells ringing. And when we heard the bells ringing, we knew that freedom had come. And we began to shout and cry and laugh in the streets. I am free. Hallelujah, I'm free. No other bound. No more chains over me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Oh, and we was just so elated and the bells was ringing and people was running in the streets. And I ran back up to the plantation and 
I saw the master, he was looking real, real sad. And I saw old Willie Sam, <laughs> old Willie Sam. <laughs> and poor Willie Sam, he was looking pretty pitiful too. And Willie Sam was sitting there and Willie Sam said, <laughs> I don't know nothing about no freedom. <laughs> what I'm going to do is some freedom. I don't know how to read. I don't know how to write. Matter of fact, I don't know nothing other than what, what the master tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't know about no freedom. I guess I better just go on back to the plantation and wait for Mr. Pierce to tell me what to do with this here freedom. <laughs> well, I looked at Willie Sam, and I looked down that road, and I said, Willie Sam, you might not know what to do with that freedom, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get away from as far as I can. And I ran, and I ran. And I ran for my freedom. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was in 1863. April the 16th. People in Washington, D.C., 3,100 enslaved people were the first free some nine months before... President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This D.C. Compensated Emancipation Act meant that we were the first free, but we're still not free until we free D.C. The last colony. We're still not free until we free D.C. The last colony. Oh, it's a whole lot of people in D.C. who are being taxed without representation. And to say that we were the first free, but we're the last free, the last colony, it means that until all of us are free, none of us are free. And we've come a long way since 1863, but we still have a long way to go. Black folks are still being used as enslaved labor. We're still demanding our reparations. We're still doing everything we can to have freedom, like equal rights and civil rights and housing and education rights. We have a whole prison industrial complex that enslaves us still today. And we're being shot down in the streets in police brutality. So we're still not free until all of us are free. And we're definitely not free here in D.C., the last colony. And so we sing a song simply that, Freedom, freedom, what are you going to do for freedom? Freedom, freedom, what you going to do for freedom? Freedom, freedom, what you going to do for freedom? Freedom, freedom, what you going to do for freedom? Freedom, freedom, are you going to vote for freedom? Freedom, freedom, are you going to sign the referendum for D.C. statehood for freedom? Freedom, freedom, how you going to stand up for freedom? Freedom, freedom, what you going to do for freedom? Okay, wonderful. That was a great uh, way to end that. And so, uh, as I was saying earlier today, uh, earlier when I started the broadcasting, what I was saying is that that was a program that took place today here in Washington, D.C., in the celebration of the commemoration of Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Today is June the 19th, uh, 2020. And so, earlier today, um, a lot of people got together and staged a, a commemoration event uh, commemorating uh, the day uh, in 1865 when the last uh, slaves were actually uh, called to freedom. Um, 
And so we just wanted to make sure that um, you um, had a chance to see what happened today here in D.C. and I'm sure um, throughout the nation as well. So thank you so much for watching.